I'm down in Corvallis at uh, OSU, and I'm here with Dana Sanchez. How are you, Dana? I'm great, thanks. So, first of all, tell me, what is your title and position here? What do you do? I'm here in the Department of Fisheries and Wildlife at OSU. I'm the Extension Wildlife Specialist, uh -huh. and I also do research on mammals. Well, speaking of research on mammals, we are here to talk to her today about three of the things that I think a lot of gardeners probably would think they see often and frustrates them. Tell right. us what those are. Well, three of the top, uh, Three of the animals that gardeners typically encounter in our area are voles, moles, and pocket gophers. And we, we gardeners that love a beautiful lawn or mm -hmm. our, our beds, we have issues with these creatures. So let's, let's yeah. do some chatting about, first of all, how we can tell the difference, because that's confused a yeah. lot, and then maybe some of the things that we do that aren't really going to make a difference. So let's start with the difference. Mm -hmm. How do I know? It's a mound of dirt. Okay. <laughs> well, if you have a mound of dirt, I immediately think of either pocket gopher or mole. Okay. And what I'd like for you to do is to find a really fresh mound of dirt and then look where there's a little sunken plug. And if it's in the middle of the mound, it's probably a mole. And if it's to the side, it's probably a gopher. And that once, like if you, also if you take the top though and scrape it off mm -hmm. and you see a tunnel, that's really not going to tell you specifically, that, is it? That doesn't tell you so much. It, that helps you find what's called an active run okay. where they're working right now. And that can be helpful if you do decide to trap or put in a poison bait. Okay. Well now, what about the voles? Because they confuse me a lot. <laughs> well, voles are about mouse sized and they are active both on the surface. You see those little runways and tiny little holes. And that's and, never... Go moles? It's always voles? It's usually voles. Isn't that weird? And then they have a whole little subway under the ground as well. Well, bless their hearts. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now we can get an idea of how to tell the difference. What are some of the things that you have heard that work, but just really don't? Well, I frequently hear, especially for the moles and gophers, sorts of things that make noises or thumpers or sonic yes. things, and then various brands of chewing gum and, and <laughs> things like that. I hear a lot of things, but the fact is that there hasn't been a whole lot of replicated studies to show any sort of uh, long-term efficacy for those. Okay, so then if, you're, if you've tried the old wives' tales, you've tried all the things that you know to do, and you're mm -hmm. still not having luck getting them out. Mm -hmm. What then are some options that work? Well, I would back up and first make sure that you really have a problem that needs to be treated. Okay. If they're active in an area that doesn't count as much, then you might be able to just benefit from what they're doing in terms of bringing the soil nutrients to the surface, helping with uh, runoff, things like that. But if they are in an area that's really high value, then you probably do need to first diagnose who it is, and that tells you how you can treat them. So, Almost every day in the garden industry, mm -hmm. I hear someone say, you know, gophers and moles, they're, they're eating my bulbs, they're, they're tearing up my flower beds. Mm -hmm. What is it that they actually eat? Well, that's where diagnosing from those mounds is really important. Okay. Uh, for the most part, most moles only eat insects okay. and things like worms and uh, invertebrates grubs? and grubs. Oh my God. That's so a, bonus. <laughs> a lawn, for example, that has a lot of grubs is like a big uh, dino. Okay. Um, but the largest moles, because of their body size, they do eat some underground plant parts. They might munch on uh, your bulbs. But for the most part, your underground damage is going to be gophers. Okay. So Dana, if you have one of these, these lovely little creatures and you, you want to rid yourself of it, what is the best way of doing that? Well, with moles, I would recommend a two-pronged approach. First, make your yard or your garden bed less attractive. So sometimes with lawns, that means cutting down the grubs. Okay. The other would then be to use a toxicant. So they have poison gummy worms to put in the, the runs themselves. Uh, then the third option would be body gripping traps. But for that, you need to find the active run where they're actually moving. Okay. Well, I can tell you, Donna, that I, I've, all my life in this industry, I've heard, you know, they're God's little excavators, and I didn't like them anyway. But the things you said, I'd never thought about runoff, stuff like right. that. Is So they, they actually can serve a purpose in the garden for us. They are. They're actually little eco-engineers. They're bringing soil nutrients to the surface, things like that. And then where if... I know that people are going to have questions, so you mm -hmm. have a, a smart place that they can actually go to online and, and ask their questions. We do, and uh, the OSU Ask an Expert website is pinned to the extension site 
Folks can upload pictures or questions, nice. and question wranglers will actually help you find me if you have a wildlife question, that'll come to me. If you had a horticulture question, it might come to another expert. Wonderful. Well, Mom, I hate to disappoint you, but the gum is not going to work on the little mounds of dirt in the garden, so you have it from someone who's much more talented than I am at this. So if you uh, have any other questions, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website where you can look them up and get your answers. You can send in pictures, get a lot of help. Really, Dana, this was delightful. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.